people ever get on a high that I've been on with the Holy Ghost? Uh, you, oh, praise the Lord. Uh, that stuff will taste like fill. It'll taste like dirt. Because I want to tell you, I get on a high every once in a while. And when I do, I want to tell you, praise the Lord, it tastes as good because it's the power of Almighty God. It's a spiritual mind that I get on that high. It's a spiritual mind. Not a carnal thing can touch it or bother it for that moment. I'm in the presence of the Lord in the heights of glory. Even though I'm still here on earth, I want you to know that one time the carnal mind can't bother you. It can't penetrate. It can't even aggravate you because you're totally in the midst and power of the Holy Ghost of God. There's nothing around you that you know anything about. And I know we've got to come back down to earth and we got to go back to work and we got to get back in the world. But aren't you thankful there's a God that can take us to that height and glory while we're still living in this old filthy world? There's people today tell me that's just emotion. But let me tell you something. Emotion comes and goes. You get emotion from different things. I get emotional sometimes when I see the flag and the national anthem being played. That's emotion. Goosebumps you get uh, from different things. That's not God. He's more than a goosebump. Thank God he is there when you're going through a time of blessing. But praise the Lord, when you're down to so deep and so far, you have to reach up and touch bottom. That same God is there. That same God is still with you. And that same God is still guarding you that the devil can't get out and snatch you because you have got a spiritual mind and God is there to protect, protect you. Well, they would know the flood came and all that happened. And then after the flood went away, people said, we're going to get back to God. And they got together and said, we will, we will make a way to get back to God. Do you know that is foolish? But yet today, men are still writing books. They're still claiming to be preachers. They're still claiming to, to know all about it. And they will... Get, tell you a way that you can get back to God without repenting of your sin. Listen, you can do everything under the sun, but if you haven't repented as deep as you have sinned and received Jesus Christ in your life, you will never walk on the streets of gold. The Bible said, he that repents and is baptized shall be saved. You can get baptized first, then won't amount to anything. You've got to baptize something that's worthy to be baptized. I was not worthy to be baptized in Jesus' name until I came back and got my repentance over with. When I quit the sin business, I was cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then after I went and was buried in the watery grave with Christ, re representing the death and the burial and the resurrection. But they didn't believe it. And so they had to have and wanted to get back to God. And God wanted men to get back to him. God wanted to commute with men again. He wanted to talk to them. He wanted to walk with them like he did Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He wanted that. But what they did, they said, we'll build us a tower and call it Babel. They built this tower and was working on it, getting it up higher and higher. And God said, I'm going to look and see what they're doing. It certainly don't look to me like I don't get the feeling that it's anything that I want. I know that man cannot do it. When God looked down and saw that tower, he just gave them all a different language. One to be over here saying, bringing me a brick. God would bring him over some cement. He'd look at him and say, you dummy. I said, I wanted brick. He said, no, it's cement. See, they had all different languages. You see, that, and they couldn't understand each other. Did you ever try to talk to somebody had a different language than you? I had to do that a lot when I was in Korea and Japan, so on, and did a lot of it out of emotions more than, 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 than talking, you know. I learned to say a, a few words and so on, Hanya Hashimika and all that sort of, how are you, and Damati Gato, thank you, and so on. But I'm telling you, I didn't learn it well enough to go out and be among them and be like them. I, I, it's hard to learn. But nevertheless, they said, we'll do it, but God said, you won't do it. So what happened instead of bringing them together to God, God, the language scattered them all over the place, all over the world. They scattered those people. Listen, when you think you've got a way 
to get to heaven outside of Jesus Christ, you're just going to scatter everything. You're never going to settle down, mount anything. Until you get Jesus in your life, you'll go out and still curse, you'll go out and still drink, you'll still do all those things. And then some man told you that you could do that, and one day, if you don't make it, well, there will be a place in purgatory where you can get right. The Bible tells me that we die in our sins, we're resurrected in our sins. As a tree falleth, so shall it lie. I don't want to die in my sin and hope that there's somewhere I'm going to get saved. You know why? Because if I spend 83 years in this life and I've never come to Jesus after opportunity, after opportunity, after altar call, after altar call, what makes anybody think that I'll change in another world? Think about it. You've got the best opportunity in the lifetime right here, right now, to get Jesus Christ in your life. But that old carnal mind, it follows us to the grave. But thank God it's on the outside now. It's not on the inside. Oh, you don't invite those thoughts in that's try to slip in there right in the middle of church. You don't in, I'm, a, I'm a human like you. I don't have this great big seal built around me that I'm protected any more than you are. I live the same life you live. I have the same things happen to me as it happens to you. But thank God... And well, you don't invite them in. And you sit in the middle of the church, here comes the devil with one. Thank God, aren't you glad? Say, Lord, you know, the only conversation you ever have with the devil, you don't want to have any other conversation. Eve made this mistake in the Garden of Eden. The only conversation you ever want to have with the devil is short. It's get behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. That's all you need to say. You start bargaining with him, and he'll talk you into something that you don't want to do. Just say, get behind me, Satan. I live for God. He gets that carnal mind on the out, but it can't get in. Now, I just didn't preach much longer, but um, there was another man in the Bible whom God knew that someday his son was going to be on the cross. He knew that when the flood came, the flood was gone. He knew that Jesus was going to the cross. But until then, he said, I want a people that will be my people. I want a people that will be circumcised and set apart from anybody else on the world. Well, thank God he circumcises our heart and, and makes us pure and free from the world. But this man Abraham rose up out of this land uh, where the, where, of Babel. He got up out of that land and he took his wife and took his nephew Lot and he went on and he came to a crossroads. And when he came to that crossroads, it had Ai was on one side, Bethel was on the other side. And just to make a long thing short, you know, Abraham chose Bethel because Ai was a city of sin like Sodom and Gomorrah and Nineveh and all the others. It was filthy, it was dirty, it was carnal, and there was nothing there. But thank God, over in Bethel, God had put a blessing on Bethel. God had marked it out. And as soon as Abraham got to Bethel, do you know the first thing he did? He built an altar unto God. He built an altar unto God. But now they're throwing the altars out of the church, and we don't need them anymore. Brother, you need them somewhere. And you better good as well to have one in church. 